And this year we have uh, Jean-Pierre Luminet uh, from uh, the Observatoire de Paris, who, uh, who is speaking on the early years of black hole imaging, his personal reflections. And before I invite him to speak, I just wanted to say a few words about Jean-Pierre. Uh, he is a French uh, astrophysicist, uh, writer, and poet. Uh, specializing in black holes and cosmology. Um, he works as the research director for the CNRS, the Center National de la Research uh, Scientifico. I, I, my French is not as good as my mother's. Um, and um, is a member of the uh, Laboratoire Universe uh, Theories, Luth, at the University, uh, at the Observatory of Paris Medon, and he also serves on the editorial board of the Astronomical Review. Uh, there is an asteroid actually called after him, uh, number 5523, and uh, in 1979, as he will describe, he created the first image of a black hole uh, using nothing but an early computer, lots of math, and the uh, ink. So he basically uh, produced the image based on calculations and then uh, the intensity of the image was drawn according to his calculations and that was really the very first uh, image and we are thrilled to have uh, Jean-Pierre give the banquet speech. Thank you, Evie. Good evening. I am deeply, very grateful to uh, the organizer of the conference for inviting me, and especially to Shep Dolman, uh, with whom I had previous, previously enjoyable email exchanges. And I am much honored to have the uh, privilege to give uh, the keynote talk with my terrible French accent. <laughs> Well, the first part uh, of, uh, of it is based uh, on a paper that I recently put uh, uh, on the archive in March. No, uh, it was the wrong way. <laughs> Sorry, I made a bad uh, movement. This is really a black hole. Okay, sorry. Hmm? Yeah, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was the wrong, the wrong button. <clears throat> we have to say that I, uh, I'm a little bit tired because in Sunday I was still in the south of Italy. I had a 12-hour drive by car to come to Marseille and take the plane uh, yesterday morning to arrive yesterday in the evening. But now I am so glad to be uh, among you to tell the story of uh, black hole uh, imaging. So the first part of uh, my talk is about uh, the story of black hole uh, uh, imaging. Since, since I, I began to address the question 41 years ago, at a time uh, when most of you were not even born, so I'm a kind of dinosaur of the story, but uh, not yet extincted. And the second part will be a surprise. Okay, uh, I recall that uh, in the beginning uh, of the 1970s, uh, we had uh, already uh, a good uh, theoretical framework for describing black hole physics and geometry, thanks to the pioneering work of John Wheeler, Stephen Hawking, uh, Roger Penrose, Brandon Carter, Remo Ruffini, and many, uh, many other people. But we had only very uh, uh, indirect evidence for uh, their real existence of black holes. For instance, we had the guess that uh, uh, we could have stellar mass black holes uh, in binary X-ray sources. And as you know, uh, we had to wait the launch of X-ray telescope in space, like the first one was uh, Uhuru in 1971, who checked that, uh, well, we had uh, the first good stellar uh, mass black hole candidate, uh, which, is, uh, which was uh, Cygnus X1. We had uh, the guess that uh, from 
pure energetic consideration for quasars and active galactic nuclei suggested by Lyndon Bell and Rees in the beginning of the 70s that uh, we should have a, a kind of uh, engine to produce uh, gravitational, to release a lot of gravitational energy in order to explain the huge amounts of energy observed in quasars and active galactic nuclei. And uh, as you know, uh, we had uh, the idea from uh, Bali et al. Uh, that uh, we had a compact radio source uh, in uh, the galactic center uh, probably uh, associated to, uh, to, uh, to, a massive, uh, to a massive black hole. Okay, so um, if the black hole itself uh, remains invisible, uh, in fact, it lights up in a very special way the matter it attracts. So uh, logically, the astrophysicists wonder what a black hole surrounded by luminous matter would look like at the scale of the event horizon the day we would have a huge and high resolution uh, uh, telescope or the still remote day when we can travel in interstellar space and uh, explore uh, a black hole neighborhood. So in the meanwhile, uh, the basic feature of black hole imaging could be calculated by computer simulation. And the first calculation of a, for a Kerr black hole was not done, uh, as the, it is usually said by John Bardeen, uh, but by Godfrey. In 1970, Godfrey published in a Physical Review this uh, paper, what is never quoted, uh, where he, he made the first uh, images of the uh, cross section, the photon capture cross section for black holes with various angular momenta. So uh, you uh, recover the special case of Schwarzschild black hole, non rotating black hole with uh, zero here which is, uh, of course, a perfect sphere, and a slightly distorted uh, event horizon uh, with an uh, increasing uh, angular uh, momentum here. So generally, it's, uh, we refer to the work of Bardin in 1972. We calculated the uh, prone shape of, uh, shape of the event horizon of an, an extremely clear black hole with very high uh, angular Momentum. So, in fact, Bardin, in the only guy to, to quote the, the previous paper by, by Godfrey, but as he told that after the rest of the mathematics was completely wrong, uh, so the paper was by Godfrey was, was forgotten in the literature. But at, at least the, uh, the, uh, uh, the picture was, uh, was correct. So it was presented by Bardin in a famous uh, a talk uh, at Lesouch, uh, the summer school of Lesouch. And Bardin uh, had uh, a PhD student uh, named uh, Cunningham. Uh, and uh, so they started to make uh, some uh, calculation, not yet uh, of an accretion disk, but just the calculation of uh, the orbit uh, of a star in circular orbit around uh, uh, an extreme care black hole. So here you have uh, the first figure showing uh, the circular or distorted circular orbit uh, around the Kerr black hole with a star. So you have here the primary image and here the uh, secondary image. The unit scale unit is here. So it's the size of the uh, event horizon. Uh, and uh, here you have two different views. The first one at polar angle of uh, 84 degrees, and you have the uh, uh, radius at uh, 20 uh, in scale of this unit. And here, a much closer circular orbit uh, at 3 uh, gm over c square uh, with the same uh, polar angle. So this is the shape of a star circular orbit. And they uh, also calculated uh, the uh, variation of uh, uh, luminosity, amplification of light by gravitational lensing, uh, just of the, uh, uh, this, uh, this punctual star uh, marked uh, here with the numbers. Okay. So uh, now I go back to my personal recollection. So after my studies in Marseille in pure mathematics, uh, uh, in 1976, I moved to Paris Meudon Observatory to uh, get a PhD, not at all on black holes. It was on singularities in uh, some strange uh, models of uh, general relativity. 
uh, and my advisor was Brandon Carter. And as you know, uh, Brandon Carter was one of the main uh, uh, contributor to black hole theory and especially to care, to care, to care geometry. Just after my, uh, my PhD, Carter suggested me to calculate uh, a realistic image of a black hole surrounded by a thin accretion disk. Of course, I liked very much the idea to show the, for the first time the, the invisible in some way. Uh, because it had uh, never been done previously, and because also uh, I was surrounded at Paris Observatory mostly by uh, classical astronomers who did not believe uh, in the existence of uh, objects uh, that uh, they could not see. So it was an interesting challenge, of course, to, uh, to show the invisible. Well, before, it was uh, always my philosophy in my uh, later work, uh, before beginning numerical calculation, writing a program, uh, it's necessary to have before an idea of what uh, you would get by geometrical consideration, for us, course, for instance. So, uh, to have the, the rough idea of the image of the circular luminous ring around the spherical body, well, you have the classical uh, uh, image. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. You have a classic, uh, the classical image uh, in a flat uh, space-time uh, with Saturn, uh, with, of course, a part of the rings, which is hidden uh, behind uh, the, uh, the main disk. But, well, just a very simple geometrical consideration tells you that instead of Saturn, you have a black hole, you have a, a thin uh, accretion disk. Of course, you will not have hidden part of the accretion disk because uh, the rear part will be... Uh, due to the bending of light, of course, will be entirely visible to, uh, to a photographic plate uh, at large distance. So you will have, you can guess, you should have this kind of uh, image for the top of the disk, distorted uh, from ellipses, of course. And you should have also a secondary image because some of the light rays are still more bent by gravitational field, and you can have... Uh, the image of the other side of the accretion disk, very distorted one. So you have the top of the disk and the bottom of the disk. And in fact, theoretically, you can have an infinite number of images, uh, depending on the wrapping of the uh, photon uh, around the, uh, uh, the event horizon. Okay, so uh, I made, uh, I started the, uh, the calculation in the beginning of 1978, uh, so I spent just a few weeks to, to write the uh, equation, and I, I achieved the, the work in the summer of 1978, and it was published in uh, Astronomy and Astrophysics uh, in January uh, 1979. So some details of my, uh, my calculation. Well, first of all, uh, I just uh, uh, put this, uh, this figure. We illuminate uh, a black hole, and uh, you have, of course, uh, an enhancement factor due to the capture of light, and uh, we recover the well-known factor, which was known for decades, uh, square, the square root of of 27. So for a Schwarzschild black hole, uh, you have an enhancement factor of the uh, horizon, the size of the horizon, the apparent size of the uh, horizon, which is the black hole shadow, uh, will be uh, uh, enhanced by a factor 2.6. All right? And uh, well, you have the return of light, which is in fact the photon ring, which is uh, here, shown here in this calculation. I call that the glory, in fact. Uh, by reference uh, in a phenomenon well known in traditional optics. You know, in traditional optics, uh, you can have sunlight uh, which is uh, scattered uh, by a uh, large number of water drop droplets in mist. And uh, it is sometimes possible to, uh, to see in, in reflection the, uh, the shadow of one, one's head uh, surrounded by uh, brilliant rings of light centered on the line of sight. So it's called the glory. It's, uh, a good term to describe uh, this uh, halo of light, uh, this, what we call now, the photon ring. So uh, after that, I start uh, the, uh, the calculation while using uh, 
the uh, only available computer at the time uh, at the uh, Meudon Observatory. It was a mainframe uh, IBM uh, 74, something like that, with transistors, a punch card, and all that, no visualization, no visualization software. Well, the first step, of course, is just uh, to write uh, the uh, equation, uh, integration of photon trajectory in the Schwarzschild matrix, okay? Uh, calculate uh, now, depending on the uh, impact parameter, uh, all the, uh, the photon orbits. And uh, the first calculation uh, gives uh, just the uh, isoradial curves. Well, just uh, the, uh, the same thing that Bardeen has the, had done uh, just for a circular orbit around uh, a Kerr black hole. This is just uh, a series of circular orbits, uh, depending, of course, of the angle of view, uh, with the primary uh, image of the circular rings. Here you have the distance. And uh, here you have the secondary image. So this is the view angle uh, with respect to the uh, plane uh, of the accretion disk of 30 degrees. And here an angle of only 10 degrees. OK, so you recognize this uh, typical shape of kind of a mushroom, something like that. Well, this is just a pure geometrical distortion. Now I would. I wanted to get a more or less realistic image, so uh, take into account the physical properties uh, of uh, an accretion disk. So uh, I took the uh, physical model of a thin uh, accretion disk, in fact, uh, geometrically, geometrically thin and optically thick accretion disk models by Shakuran, Sanayev, and Page, and so on. So we had uh, the uh, intrinsic flux bolometric, eh? all these are integrated with on all uh, uh, wavelengths, depending uh, on the uh, accretion rates uh, and all that. So uh, just the simple model says that uh, the uh, intrinsic flux is, is maximum uh, at uh, this uh, about uh, 10, uh, 10 Schwarzschild radii. Okay, after that, we have to take into account uh, all the redshift effects, two kinds of redshift effects, the Einstein effect, of course, uh, from the gravitational field, and mostly the Doppler effect due to the relativistic uh, motion of the uh, disk uh, around the black hole. So this is just the formula, all right? And finally, uh, step four, uh, just uh, to uh, have the uh, apparent, uh, apparent flux for a distant observer, that's all. So you have, uh, I could get, uh, with the drawing software, the only drawing software we had, uh, I, can, I could draw the curves of constant apparent flux, depending on the uh, angle of view, okay? So the number here are just uh, in units uh, of the uh, uh, maximum uh, intrinsic flux, okay? And this is the apparent flux in units of that. And uh, you see that, uh, of course, this is the part where the Doppler effect uh, is uh, the most important, the part of the disk uh, approaching from the uh, observer, so you have uh, an amplification uh, of light. So all these curves are, were presented in my uh, article uh, in uh, astronomy and astrophysics, but of course the uh, final picture, which was a more or less realistic picture, was that one. So the paper was called The Image of the Spherical Black Hole with Seen uh, Accretion Disk, uh, so uh, published in January in uh, Astronomy uh, and Astrophysics. So I repeat that it's geometrically seen uh, disk, uh, but optically sick, so it's the reason why we see, so you see here the black hole shadow, of course, enhanced by the factor 2.6 compared to the real size of the event horizon. Here you have the uh, primary image, namely the, the top of the accretion disk. Here you have the uh, last stable circular orbit because as you know in Schwarzschild space-time uh, the inner edge of the uh, accretion disk uh, uh, is at some distance from the uh, event horizon. Here you have the secondary image, namely the other side of the accretion disk, but which is in fact the equivalent of the photon ring. And here you have the part uh, uh, of the accretion disk uh, which is uh, uh, strongly enhanced uh, by uh, uh, the Doppler effect 
because uh, the rotation of the disk is uh, like that. So this is the approaching part, and this is the receding part. So now well, it has been told that uh, I made this drawing by hand just because we had no uh, visualization software. So uh, what I do, did exactly, well, I started with, uh, I had this. So I printed a large uh, copy of that. I put on this uh, transparent paper and I put by hand with Indian ink a number of points with black ink with Indian ink proportional to the, to the flux. So I put by hand uh, about uh, 10,000 points, something like that, okay. So in fact, uh, it was the easiest part of the thing. It was not very difficult, just a little patience. I took maybe uh, one day, not more, okay. So uh, you can see from that, uh, I put uh, the, the by hand and uh, I get this, uh, uh, this picture. Okay, so in fact, the picture was first shown uh, uh, not in the uh, astronomy and astrophysics paper, but in a, in a popular uh, French magazine, which is called La Recherche, with more or less the equivalent of Scientific American, uh, where in fact, we were told uh, to write the first popular paper on black holes uh, with Brandon Carter. And uh, as I just got this image, uh, so we added this, uh, this image. Uh, so it was published for real the first time in November uh, 1978, 41 years ago. And uh, after the technical paper with all the, uh, the details and the equation in January uh, 79. Uh, just at the end of the, uh, of the paper, I would just uh, want to announce this, uh, this sentence that uh, already uh, we predicted that, that uh, maybe this kind of picture would uh, uh, be, uh, uh, well, would, could represent uh, some sources like uh, uh, M87, because already at the time, well, <laughs> we had some indication of the presence of uh, supermassive black holes uh, in, uh, so it was, uh, as I told you, it was not a, a great job to, to just put uh, uh, thousands of points, black points, because at the time I was uh, practicing for many years uh, uh, lithography and drawings with Indian ink, and usually I made a drawing much more complicated than that. And uh, at the same time, uh, I, uh, I produced a lithography called the black hole, but which was my own interpretation, nothing scientific, pure artistic view, uh, which was that one. So you can guess that uh, it's much, much more difficult, and I took several months to do this, and not just a, a one, uh, one day. So, of course, it's completely uh, metaphoric, because uh, here you have a kind of... Uh, Cathedral, which is, uh, can represent uh, Newtonian physics, which, <laughs> okay, and uh, here you have a kind of optical illusion with uh, the, 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 here, uh, the pavement, with, uh, which uh, looks uh, curved, negatively curved, but in fact it's just a pure optical illusion. It's perfectly right, but I introduce, uh, uh, well, some uh, uh, perspective uh, uh, which attracts the, uh, uh, the look to the bottom. And so here you have, of course, the, uh, the symbol, the metaphor of the black hole. And uh, I already introduced the idea that uh, quantum mechanics, represented by dice, could play a fundamental role in the, the, uh, the, the uh, physics of, uh, uh, of black holes. And in fact, uh, this picture was uh, used uh, at the cover of my first book on black holes, which was uh, published first in French and uh, after uh, in Cambridge University Press, uh, uh, in which uh, I have one chapter devoted to the, the picture uh, of black hole that I, I showed you. So now uh, I continue the story. In fact, the first, uh, so nobody happened for about uh, 10 years. Uh, the first non-bolometric image uh, was produced uh, uh, by two uh, young uh, Japanese guys, Fukue and Yokohama, in 1988, 
we calculated uh, for a stellar mass uh, Schwarzschild black hole uh, the shape and the color uh, with uh, uh, depending of temperature with a special coding of course uh, of uh, an accretion disk so for instance for a stellar mass uh, you had uh, this kind of temperature uh, so uh, you have here a false color of course it is bolometric and this is the x-ray band and this is this uh, uh, the optical band, and they also calculated a picture for a super, super massive uh, uh, black hole. Okay, now uh, I had uh, a collaborator called Jean Lamarck, who was uh, very gifted for numerical simulation. And in uh, 1989, while I spent one year in Berkeley working on completely different subjects like cosmic topology, uh, I suggested to, uh, to Jean Lain, who stayed in Paris Observatory, to use uh, well, the modern computer well, uh, uh, to produce new image in color and uh, uh, also uh, animated image. And I show you uh, another published image, uh, which is that one, with different angles of view uh, of a Schwarzschild black hole with all the uh, Doppler effect uh, took into account uh, Okay, so you see, you see the primary image and you see the uh, secondary image of photon ring at the, uh, at the center. When I went back to, uh, to Paris, uh, I told to, uh, to Jean-Lain Marc to, uh, to produce animated uh, image, uh, essentially uh, to, to make a movie, a documentary uh, on black holes uh, for, the French, uh, for the French television. So Jean Alain uh, performed some fantastic numerical simulation, taking account uh, diffusion effects uh, in a accretion disk, all the physics. So I show you uh, some pictures of uh, Jean Alain Marc. So this is a colored image of a Schwarzschild black hole accretion disk with an inclination angle of seven degrees. So uh, you have the Doppler effect, the uh, primary image, the secondary image. The, uh, the disk is slightly, uh, uh, it's, 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 uh, slightly optically seen, so you can see uh, the, the guess of the uh, secondary image here, okay, with the background star. After that, I asked to uh, Jean Alain for the needs of the movie to calculate a flight into a Schwarzschild black hole along a plunging trajectory, starting very far from the black hole, crossing the plane of the accretion disk, and finally finishing inside the black hole, and step by step, by step we calculate the landscape. Okay? Always using the uh, equation of general relativity. Uh, it's not at all an artist view, really. Uh, numerical calculation. So, uh, away from the black hole, we recover the uh, expected image, here we cross the accretion disk. Here we are in position five, position six, position seven. So here, for instance, uh, you, you see not only the uh, secondary image, but the tertiary image, very stick on the uh, event horizon, uh, enlarged uh, event horizon. And as soon as we approach very closely to the uh, event horizon, we see more and more distorted image of the uh, uh, accretion disk, multiple images. And the final image is inside the black hole. Uh, we just turn uh, by, uh, to see the uh, outer universe. And we still see something, of course, because light uh, comes into the black hole. Uh, and we can see uh, the very distorted uh, shape of the uh, accretion disk. Finally, I asked to, uh, to Jean Alain uh, to make a full, uh, a full movie for this kind of trajectory. So this is a flight around the uh, Schwarzschild black hole uh, with an uh, elliptical orbit with all the precision effects. So uh, we will cross several times the uh, accretion disk. And this gives uh, this movie that was shown in uh, the TV uh, documentary which is that one. <clears throat> it 
So you can see the, uh, the disk is uh, not optically sick because we can see in transparency some stars through the, uh, through the disk. Okay, so we have done uh, several uh, turns uh, in crossing the black hole. So uh, probably you, are, you had never seen these fantastic images. Uh, one of the reasons is that uh, at the end of the 90s, uh, Jean Lamarck uh, brutally died from a cancer at the age of 40. And uh, as he calculated all the things uh, on a personal computer, nobody could uh, never find uh, the, uh, his programming code. So the only remaining is just uh, this uh, picture animation uh, of the uh, movie. And uh, I could uh, recover this, uh, uh, this image for for you. So it's one of the reasons why this uh, extraordinary work of, uh, by Jean Lamarck uh, remains uh, mostly unknown, is uh, never quoted in uh, your papers. Um, of course, some of you have seen the uh, simulation of a black hole in Interstellar movie. So just for the fun and the anecdote, keeps on uh, wrote me a special email before the release of the movie on the screen. Uh, I was not aware that he was preparing a movie, okay? So he told me, Jean-Pierre, uh, if, uh, if you go to the cinema, if you want to <laughs> if you see my movie, don't be shocked uh, that uh, the, the image uh, uh, that is uh, presented in the media uh, as it is the best uh, ever uh, uh, simulation, black hole simulation, does, doesn't take into account the basic feature of the Doppler effect, because when I proposed that to uh, the filmmaker, Christopher Nolan, uh, he didn't want at all <laughs> to have this, because uh, well, he, was, he, he was thinking that people would, uh, would uh, understand nothing to that. Well, I'm not sure that uh, they understood something uh, in the movie, but well, okay. In fact, this configuration we had already calculated uh, in a purely realistic way uh, with, uh, with Jean Lamarck, uh, and we published uh, in a popular magazine, we are exactly in the plane, so you exactly recover the, uh, the image, the distorted image, the pure geometrical distortion, but here you have really the, all the diffusion effects of the uh, accretion disk, uh, the Doppler effect, uh, and, uh, and all that. Okay, now, uh, well, uh, after that uh, I worked on uh, completely different subject, but well, the work of visualization of black hole accretion disk uh, uh, went on. So the first accretion disk imaging for a Kerr black hole, mostly extreme Kerr black hole, was done by, by Virgutz uh, in 1983. So it's more or less a generalization of the Bardeen calculation. It's not a very realistic image, but well, the calculation is uh, at least uh, correct according to the law of general relativity. Uh, we have also uh, some simulation uh, by Fanton at uh, Galvani and other guys, and by Bromley, okay? So here you see, for instance, uh, these lines are the lines of uh, uh, zero redshift, okay? So here you have a Doppler effect increasing the uh, uh, apparent flux, and here you have the uh, Doppler effect decreasing. Uh, the same here, okay? So, uh, well, I stopped just uh, the uh, early story of black hole imaging. It's really poor, uh, not much uh, simulation, because, uh, well, when the uh, VLBI EHC projects began with uh, the paper, the basic paper by Falk and Melia, by Shep, uh, uh, well, at the beginning of the, uh, of the century, um, well, uh, there was a blooming of uh, numerical calculation. So uh, when I see that uh, just for the, your, your calculation, uh, you have an image library with uh, 60,000 <laughs> fixtures, of course, it's a completely different story, uh, including uh, magneto hydrodynamics and all that. So for instance, uh, while well, I could check, uh, well, I didn't follow exactly, uh, I will explain uh, why uh, this uh, story, uh, but uh, well, uh, I rediscovered, in fact, the project uh, through uh, the paper in uh, Scientific American uh, with uh, some simulation uh, uh, by Broderick and, uh, uh, and Loeb, I hear. So uh, yeah. we recover, of course, the... Uh, initial uh, shapes that I uh, calculated uh, uh, previously. Okay. 
Um, so, uh, in fact, uh, what was I doing during this time? So I didn't follow more the uh, history of black hole imaging because, in fact, uh, in the uh, decades of uh, 1980, uh, uh, I, I was one of the first to, to work about uh, the uh, tidal disruption of stars by uh, supermassive black hole, which was another way to uh, have indirect signature of the uh, uh, presence of black holes uh, in the center of galactic nuclei. And so in uh, the first paper was published uh, with Bernard Carter in Nature. And we predicted uh, a kind of what we call the tidal supernova, namely uh, the strong crushing of uh, stars, uh, which penetrate deeply inside the tidal radius in a kind of a pancake configuration and uh, with a thermonuclear detonation uh, of the star just by the external gravitational field. Uh, uh, tidal field. So uh, I worked uh, after that with uh, some students uh, to develop uh, all these uh, models which have been uh, observed uh, later. And uh, also after, uh, in the next decade, uh, I worked essentially in cosmology, in cosmic topology, and I proposed, for instance, in 2003, uh, a special model for the shape of space, uh, finite space with a dodecahedral space topology, uh, finite space without a boundary, and we made the cover of, uh, of the nature. Okay, so it's one of the reasons why I didn't follow uh, very closely uh, the progress, uh, fantastic progress in the LBI observation. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, now this uh, final image. Well, in fact, I was always a rather self solitary researcher, I'm doing my work either alone or with one or two collaborators, no more. So I am really deeply admirative to people able to build and to manage great scientific projects involving dozens of institutes and hundreds of researchers all around the world with no guarantee of success. So it was the case, already the case, with the uh, LIGO-Virgo collaboration leading to the uh, detection, first detection of gravitational waves, and, and it is now the case uh, with the uh, EHT uh, program. And I am really deeply moved to be here uh, in the very heart of the Black Hole Initiative, and sees, thanks to all of you, one of my dreams become a concrete reality 40 years later. So normally I should have stopped here if I had uh, no ordinary talk, but as I have the privilege to uh, have a little more time, I had something new. You see, the, you know that we can also uh, have an idea to uh, show black hole uh, not surround, surrounded by accretion disk, just naked black hole, but which have an effect just by gravitational lensing on uh, a background sky. And one of my collaborators, which is called Alain Riazuelo, who is working at the Institut d'Astrophysique uh, de Paris, with whom I collaborated for cosmic topology. Uh, I asked him also to make some uh, uh, simulation, uh, very realistic simulation of uh, gravitational lensing uh, uh, of black holes. Because in fact, there is really a French school of black hole uh, imaging. So for instance, here you have uh, uh, a map, star map, real star map of the uh, southern hemisphere with the Milky Way, something like that. So uh, Alain calculated uh, what would like uh, the, uh, this picture if on the line of sight here you have a black hole, okay? So what, this is the result of the calculation. Of course, the uh, primary image is distorted in the vicinity of the black hole. You have a secondary image which shows the full Milky Way, and not only the part of the Milky Way in the field, huh? because of course, uh, as we know, we have the ancient ring, theoretical ancient ring. And inside the ancient ring, as you know, the full universe is duplicated, entirely duplicated. So all the uh, external universe, all the celestial sphere is entirely duplicated and strongly distorted, of course, uh, inside the uh, ancient ring. So more spectacular now, we imagine always with this uh, nice view of the southern hemisphere, you recognize uh, the Mag Magellanic clouds here. 
the uh, thousand cross, alpha and beta cent uh, century, Akarna, uh, Akarna here, Canopus. Now we calculate uh, the landscape, moving landscape, with a black hole passing exactly uh, in the middle of the uh, large Magellanic cloud. So a simulation done by uh, Alain in 2006. This is the movie. So you see a lot of stars here because it's inside the Ensign ring. So this is the duplication of all the bright stars of the celestial sphere. Here you have exactly the Ensign ring and the, path, the black hole passes. And again, you have separated your image, but double image, primary image, secondary image of the large Magellanic cloud. The same for the uh, small Magellanic clouds and all the stars are, are duplicated. Okay, so this has been done a few years ago and uh, maybe some of you have seen this picture that, that uh, are available on the web. But now you have not seen the rest of uh, the end of my talk because this is a very, very, very recent and unpublished work uh, done by uh, Alain Riazuelo. And so to finish the uh, dinner, I propose you a journey into uh, a clear black hole realistic journey, more or less realistic, because it's an ideal, idealized Kerr black hole. So as you know, uh, the Kerr black hole uh, has a more complex structure with a ring singularity, uh, which can be uh, avoided by some trajectories. So you can have trajectory crossing the event horizon, uh, passing uh, above the plane of the uh, disk and leaving the black hole through a wormhole. But you can also have trajectory passing through the rings and uh, going into a, a kind of negative universe, asymptotically flat universe inside the black hole. So you know that the best way to represent the complex structure of uh, an ideal Kerr black hole is the Penrose Carter diagram. Okay, so as you know, it's a conformal diagram where infinity is just uh, here. Okay, so this is a uh, whole universe, a totally flat uh, space time. This is a Kerr black hole with a different uh, part. Uh, okay, so uh, and uh, here you have other universe which can be, uh, by topological consideration, identified with our own universe. Okay, so uh, you know that here you have the ring singularity, uh, and you have two event horizons. You have uh, the outer event horizon, which is really uh, the real frontier of, uh, uh, of the black hole, uh, and you have uh, uh, an inner event horizon. Okay, now uh, we... Uh, we are going to a flight into a Kerr black hole with this uh, angular momentum. It's not uh, really extreme hole, but uh, it's spinning at a, a fairly high rate. So it's a completely new uh, calculation by uh, Alain Riazuelo, still uh, uh, unpublished. So uh, I will show you the landscape calculated step by step along this kind of trajectory. So it's a plunging trajectory starting from our universe, outside, of course, the Kerr black hole, plunging into uh, the black hole, crossing the two event horizon, crossing the ring singularity, and finishing in the uh, infinite space inside the black hole, but with negative gravity. Okay? So we start uh, the view here, at r equals 6m. What we see? This. Alors, here you have the, uh, the view of our universe. Of course, you have the Milky Way. So Alain used, uh, as in the previous calculation, the uh, two-mass uh, map of the sky here. So just, you see this, but of course distorted by the uh, gravitational lens. Okay, so this is just the view of our universe. 
But you see also something else, this part. And you see, in fact, the region here, minus 7. Why? Because you have some uh, light ray trajectories, such as that one, okay, coming from the past, and which give a view of this universe, okay, which is represented here by uh, this picture. All right, so now we progress. We just cross the uh, event horizon, the outer event horizon. So we are inside the black hole. So what we see in B, here. Yes, because the outer, uh, outer uh, event horizon is at this, at this radial distance, and here you are just inside, okay? So now in B, what we see in B is this. So we still see the uh, external space-time because, of course, uh, you, have st you have still the uh, past light cone coming from the infinity, so giving uh, an image uh, of the full uh, uh, universe, more and more distorted. Uh, and here you have uh, complicated uh, things, uh, which is black uh, for some, uh, some reasons. Okay. Now what we, we see in C, so we have crossed uh, part of the black hole and we approach the second uh, uh, event horizon, the inner event horizon. What we see in C, we see this. So we still see our universe, of course, just uh, due to the uh, past li light cone. So you have still information from the uh, starting universe, even here. And uh, it's more and more distorted, of course. So this is the uh, two mass uh, uh, map, uh, very distorted. But here, you appear something new, which is in fact region three, which is in fact represented by, well, we make uh, we, the hypothesis that in the uh, region three, we had also a kind of map, okay? And this map is used to calculate uh, the uh, distorted uh, result coming from this kind of trajectory. For coming from a region three, you have photon trajectory passing through C, okay? Crossing the black hole, crossing the wormhole, and going into uh, universe 11. So this is the, uh, the view uh, in point C. Now we have crossed the uh, inner horizon. You are, we are in point D. close to the uh, singularity. What we see in D? We see this. Now we have three regions. Always all universe, because you have always uh, the light cones. You, uh, yep, you see, yes. This kind of trajectory, okay, gives you this image. Now you see region three always, okay, with this kind of trajectory. And this, by you can see something coming from region seven here. This is the negative universe on the other side of the uh, ring singularity because you have trajectory coming from this part in your past light, light cone, which gave also uh, this image. And we have assumed that uh, we have a kind of cosmic microwave background in this uh, negative universe, and you have here the uh, image. And now, uh, since we are very close to the ring singularity, we can ask, where is it, this ring singularity? So we can see the ring singularity. It is here, very thin uh, line here. Okay, this is the ring singularity. 
So finally, we cross the singularity, and uh, we are on the other side, in the negative universe. So what we see in this point is this. We still see uh, the uh, starting universe, and uh, namely region one, and essentially here we see uh, region seven, namely uh, trajectory coming from uh, uh, this part, this negative universe. And finally, uh, we are in the negative universe, and what we see in F is essentially this. We see essentially uh, uh, the supposed cosmic microwave ground of region seven, the universe in which we are now, negative universe. And we still see um, here something coming from the uh, starting universe. So you still have a memory of uh, your starting uh, your starting universe. So this is a uh, well, uh, this uh, new calculation uh, of a flight into a Kerr black hole. And now Alain is calculating the same picture for a trajectory not crossing the uh, uh, annular ring, but just uh, passing through the wormhole and going. That doesn't work no more. Uh, and going into uh, region 11 or 9, okay? So really uh, uh, going out of the black hole through the, uh, the, more hole, the, the wormhole, and so we, uh, we will have uh, uh, soon the, uh, the picture. All right, so uh, it's finished for this, uh, uh, this travel. So I thank you <laughs> with this funny picture. I disappear into a black hole. So I hope, uh, I, hope, I hope you have enjoyed, but uh, really I want to insist that uh, I'm deeply honored to be uh, among you. Uh, so glad to see uh, the, one, the realization of what, one of my dreams. Well, in fact, it was not a dream, but uh, because uh, in 1979, uh, I never expected that in my lifetime I would see a, a real telescopic image. One of the reasons is that I'm a pure theorist. I'm completely ignorant in uh, experimental uh, things. Uh, at the time, I never heard about the LBI, so I could not imagine that uh, we could have a, a network of uh, telescopes uh, to see uh, uh, the biggest black hole, even if I predict that maybe the main target, the first target, could be already M87. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jean-Pierre. Um, can you just translate the, what this man is saying? <laughs> we can hear you, GP. Okay. It cuts. Okay. Um, communication is cut. Just wanted to mention that uh, Jean-Pierre was extremely productive uh, some uh, 30, no, 40 years ago, the paper yeah. that you wrote. Yeah, uh, he also has a, a, a child that is one year old which is quite uh, remarkable. Um, and we will take a couple of questions, uh, if there are any from the audience. Yes, Maciek. So uh, my question is, uh, why did you, sh did you mention M87 in the paper? Did you know actually the estimate of the distance and mass at that time? W why would that be a candidate to be mentioned in a paper? For M87? Yeah. You mean? Because at the time uh, we had already uh, some measurement of stellar dynamics by uh, Jung at, uh, and collaborator in paper in 1977. Uh, suggesting uh, the probably presence, just to explain the stellar dynamics of a black hole of about, at the time it was five billion solar masses, uh, first of all. Second, uh, it was not, M87 was not considered as an active galactic nucleus, uh, so rather quiescent black holes, so plausibly surrounded by 
accretion disk, but not very uh, uh, high accretion rate. So maybe a thin accretion disk. So uh, it appeared to be a, a good target, a good candidate. Huh? <laughs> well. Any other question? Any other question? Uh, if not, uh, let's thank Jean-Pierre for a beautiful presentation.